So hey everyone, this is the second video in a series where we're looking at the High Nibbles MSI 8080 incremental emulators. Uh, in this series, we're specifically looking at using the S132 add-on card to provide real-world input and output uh, into the emulation. Uh, we looked at the card that has emulated the D plus 7 AIO card from Kremenko and how the S132 implements the emulation of it. Uh, we looked at the joystick interface card that will provide us a couple of joystick inputs so we can get analog voltages into the machine. Uh, and we looked a little bit at how the S132 is configured. We're actually going to dive into these uh, things here and take a look at how to configure the S132 uh, and some things like that. And hopefully in the third video in the series, we'll get into actually programming and see against it. So with that little introduction, I invite you to grab your coffee or whatever your favorite drink is, and let's dive in. So the screen here is rather busy. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, we have a little reminder of the control keys that are used to control the S132. Uh, the control alt and the function keys are used to put the S132 into different modes. And uh, let me say that a little clearer. The S132 card outputs to a VGA monitor, and it could output a whole bunch of different things. And specifically, what the control keys we're going to be looking at do tell it to output the VT100 emulation, uh, the S132 configuration screen, and an analog screen for looking at some of his test stuff so you can go in and center your joysticks and that kind of stuff. Below that is an output from Waveform. So Waveform is a little application that uses uh, Diligent, uh, what's it called, the Analog 2? Analog Discovery 2, actually. It gives me the capability to have voltmeters and a simple uh, oscilloscope on screen. In this case, we've got two voltmeters displayed. One of them is the x-axis of a joystick and the other one's y. Right now, those are reading about 1.6 volts each. That means the joysticks are centered. We talked about this in a little bit more detail in the first video. Below that is yours truly, a little webcam here. And in this video, I'm remembering to actually look at it when I talk to you because it's a little less confusing. Below that, we have webcams up here pointing at my uh, MSI 8080 emulator. You can see a couple of joysticks here sitting in front of it. You can see my keyboard here doing colored LED stuff. This is the keyboard that's connected directly to the S132 on the back of the machine. It's a USB keyboard. And the S132 is outputting to a video capture device and then comes to a, a VGA monitor you can kind of see floating up here. So I can see what's going on and there'll be a screen capture. You can see that blinking cursor in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. That's the video capture from the S132 output. As we come across the bottom then from the right, there's a little color graphic that we talked about in the first video, and this is what I'm calling the programming model. In the center of that are the orange, green, yellow, and blue blocks. That's the pinouts on the back of the S132 that you use to get stuff in and out of the S132 from the real world. Uh, we'll be looking at one of the models built in there, and that specifically is the joystick, uh, an audio module. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in those configurations. And the middle east there are two pictures of the joysticks, just because that's the joysticks we're using. And finally, in the bottom left is a picture of the S132 card plugged into my MSI. And then there's a card standing vertically in it that is the joystick interface that the uh, High Nibble provides. Uh, so really, that's, I think, a quick description of everything that's on screen. So let's jump in now and take a look at the uh, S132 configurations. So right now the M size powered off. There's no lit or no LEDs lit on the front. It really doesn't matter in this case. The S132 is powered up and active. Uh, power's coming into the S132 from an external wall adapter regulated on the S132. That's how I have it configured. It's also powering the M side. We'll go ahead and power the M side up, even though we really don't need to. So in that little diagram in the upper right, we show various key combinations to get us into various mode screens in the S132. Just so it's said, the S132 is outputting these various screens, and all you're really doing from the keyboard is switching between which screen is visible on the VGA monitor. They're not doing anything internally to the S132 besides saying, hey, display this or that thing on screen. If I hold down Control-Alt and F6, We'll get into the system menu here for the S132, and you can see there's a bunch of options. I'm going to have to look at the screen to do this. From the S132, you can actually mount floppies. You can see that I have CPM22, uh, that floppy installed here. 
Uh, there's a couple other floppies installed. There's one for the Dazzler, and there's some, a disk I'm doing some development on. You can see the library of disks you have available, and you can mount these disks directly here from inside of the S132. You don't need to jump back into the web UI to connect those floppies. We have some system controls here. These are somewhat similar to what you see in, in the MSI setup. Uh, there's all kinds of information here. I probably just displayed my Wi-Fi password someplace on here. It would be just my luck to do that. I'll have to look at these in detail when I get back. There's environment, some tasks that are running on the ESP32 emulator. There's a view with the boot config and the system config. That's actually where my Wi-Fi password's hidden. And there's the ability to reboot. Uh, I challenge you, or I don't challenge you, I encourage you to play with those and understand what they do. There is the control of the CPA front panel. So the CPA is the front panel on the machine that has the LEDs and switches on it. And it's and its lower right-hand side are a bunch of, of momentary up, momentary down switches that are run and stop and reset. And you can control those from here. You really control the state of the machine. I can run the uh, machine. I can stop it. I can reset it. And I can do an external clear if it's needed. The menu option we're really after here in this video is the S132. This is how you control the S132. And we can move out here and we can restart it, do a firmware flash. We're going to ignore, ignore those because what we're interested in is this D plus 7 AIO option. This is where we control the Kremenko D plus 7 AIO cards emulation in the machine. There's what are defined as modes here. And these modes are really more how the emulation views the card than making any changes on the emulated card. And right now the D plus 7 AI was off. That way it's not trying to sample ADDs and do things in the emulation. Uh, there's a joystick audio mode. Uh, this is the mode where you can get the little analog joysticks. We've got a couple of them sitting here. With, well, that didn't show up well with the little thumb joystick. That's the mode where you can enable those to act as joysticks and to control, enable the audio output. The uh, D plus 7 AIO has digital or analog outputs that can be used to do limited audio. You can also tell the emulation you're in line printer mode. You've got the line printer adapter card plugged in. It provides a, a Centronics compatible line printer output if you want to actually use a physical printer on the machine. And finally, just full input output mode. And that says, you know, all the digital and analog bits are available. Do as you please. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the joystick audio mode, I'm hitting spacebar here to enable that. You should have seen the little asterisk show up. And I'm going to back all the way out here just because it's a good thing to do, though I think it's necessary. If I go on to, I believe, control alt f 7 we get the calibration screen for the joysticks. If the joysticks aren't working or aren't plugged in, you'll see the colored lines here dance all over the screen because the analog inputs for the ADD converters are floating. Uh, you may run into an issue here where the centering doesn't look correct. Let me see if I go back to F6. I remember how to do this. I have centered mine oh, options. Under options here is the ability to do a recenter. So if those those colored lines aren't centered, you can do a recenter here and you can bring those back to the center point in the emulation. And it basically tells the emulation the current position of the stick is, is the center. You can also control some things here, whether that centering is zeroed or the raw value and some sample rate information or control information and stuff, but we're not really going to dig into those here. So let me go back over to the F7 screen here. And from this, we can pick up one of these joysticks here, try to get it centered in the screen here, and we can move it around and we can see the lines on the screen dance around. And we can push the buttons. And we can see changes there on the screen where buttons are being held down and ones are turning into zeros. This is just a good confirmation your S132 is functioning correctly. The joystick adapter is functioning correctly. The joystick's built, been built correctly. The ribbon cable, etc., works. It, it just gives you a good place to test what you built to make sure it works. Uh, is there anything else here to really talk about? Uh, Alt F or Control Alt F1 will bring you back to the V2100 emulation. The blinking cursor should be back in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Why isn't it? Uh, have I had a failure here? So, one thing to note, and I think I just got caught in this, is if you jump between these screens on the S132 too quickly, you can cause it to actually act up. Uh, and 
not necessarily work. I'm going to reach back behind the machine and push the reset button, which I just did. That resets both the MSI and the S132. That uh, little button is actually on the uh, uh, ESP32 Pico kit card itself. There's also a reset built into the recessor on the side of the machine that's a little harder to reach. We have the blinking cursor back now. This was actually a good thing to see in action because at this point, because we've done a full reset, if I go in and look at the S132, it's back to off. We need to re-enable that joystick and, and audio stuff again. Um, I should now be able to come back to F1 and see the blinking cursor on the S132. So with that, let's jump a little deeper into this. Let's actually go into the F7 screen. And you can see uh, the green and red and the yellow and blue lines on it. And I don't remember which. I guess it's this one. So this is the joystick on the machine. If you look at the little voltmeter there to the right, you'll see the voltage is dancing around. So what the voltmeter is tied to is directly to the center pin on the potentiometers here. So it's actually measuring the voltage that the, the wiper, the center pin on the potentiometers is outputting. And as I move down to a zero, you'll see it fall down to minus 12 millivolts. You should see it come up to about 3.3. And if we go left to right, you'll see the same things. So this is confirming that the emulation system itself is seeing the joysticks. There's a little bit of lag here because of the video capture. I apologize for it. And the, the emulation is capturing those incoming actual voltages. Uh, that lag bothers me. The lag again is my video capture device. It's not the emulation. But confirms what we see here that the analog voltages being generated from the joystick are getting digitized and they are appearing in the emulation of the D7 plus AIO. It's just, you know, voltages. Uh, the, the interface is, the emulation here is using the analog to digital converters and the ESP rover, I believe it is, on the S132 card. So it truly is a analog to digital conversion going on in the emulation, really in, in the hardware on the S132 card. And then the emulation is seeing that as the ADD inputs that would come from the, uh, D plus seven AO card. Hopefully I've explained that well. Is there anything else I wanted to capture in this video? We've kind of set the stage here for controlling the S132 from the keyboard. It's the keyboard tied directly to it. In my case, via USB, your keyboard could be PS2. Depends on how you built your S132. Little demonstration here that we are measuring the voltages, you know, voltages in the real world. Uh, coming off of this joystick, we're literally the voltmeters tied to the pins here around the back of the machine on this ribbon cable. Uh, I think we've proven I can look at the webcam when I speak to you. Unlike previous videos where I was looking at the other webcam. Hit a bit on the programming model we're working towards. I think that covers my intent for this video. In the next video, we will jump in and write some C code under CPM using the BD Systems C compiler to actually talk to the emulated D plus seven AIO and read the animal or the digital you know the digital positioning of the joysticks and display it. And that's really the goal of this little video series is to come from understanding the hardware to how the emulation is configured and finally how to program against it. I didn't need much coffee to stay awake. I hope you didn't either. Uh, I guess with that, we'll wrap this one up and I'll see you in a future video.